What's up guys? In this episode of the Barrett 4580 build, we're going to be building a sealed overextension drawer and then finally finishing the rear end of my tray. I've rebranded my channel. I never liked the self-branded channel and it's taken me 17 episodes to figure out something else that I like. So I've rebranded to design and build because that's what I want to focus on on this channel. Not so much the installs, the maintenance and the gear reviews, but the actual design and build. I guess I'll do it, do a little bit of the other stuff as well. Maybe you like the name, maybe you don't, but the content is not changing. So designed and built. Speaking of, let's get into the build log now. Doing the rear end today, I've got my brother Alex helping me. What an absolute legend. So he's on the bandsaw cutting the bits to length. Same thing as last time for the tray. Got got it all in CAD. Had the Got them all printed out, so you can sort of see here, this is a rough shape that we're gonna follow, and then the light's gonna go in there. Using spacers and clamps just to make sure that this is completely horizontal, because it'll look really bad if it wasn't. So Al's just checking that it's square, and it'll be good to tack it up. So all welded and primed now, I've got to do an infill panel for the light and then bolt the light on. Cardboard templates coming in handy once again. So I've just got to take a notch out of those alley guards and then we're good to go. Let's jump into the drawer design now. We'll finish off the rear end once the drawer is installed. I found a supplier that has all their parts in CAD, so I just downloaded the STLs, import it, Spent a bit of time mucking around with the limit mates so that it actually replicates a slider. Um, I didn't bother with the latch because it wasn't worth my time. I want my drawer to be flush with the back of the chassis. I'll go through the reasoning for that later, so I need an overextension slider. Drawn up a little diagram for ways you could do overextension sliders. So number one, you can see the overextension sliders. Now they do exist, they're really expensive, $1,200 a set, which is just too far out of my budget for the build. You could also do sliders in series, which is a non-ideal loading scenario. I think this would be okay for light things like a camp kitchen, and I'll probably end up using this when we end up designing and building the camp kitchen. And then there's number three, the long slider. So this is cheap and strong. The disadvantage of this is it sticks out behind the drawer, but this is what I'm going with because I don't think the sticking out behind the drawer is going to be an issue for me, and you'll see that later on in the video. I guess my process is always get my geometry right first, so I did a bunch of quick and dirty extrudes on faces. I designed my drawer, got all the dimensions right, and checked it, checked it off the car. Then I sent it to the laser cutter and worked out with them how we were going to fold it using their machines. If they're a good laser cutter, they're going to know their machines much better than you ever will. CAD is really powerful software and I'm really only scraping the surface of the stuff that I'm showing you. So check out the cross-sectional area for this drawer. This is how I was able to get all my tolerances right and you'll see that later on in the build log. We have all the bits of my drawer here as you just saw on CAD. So this is the actual drawer. I had to do this with a weld on back just because the folder couldn't fold up the fourth side for me. This is the face here. so. You can sort of see here, this is going to go and get welded on like that. I think I'm going to have to do stitch welds around the edges. And my draw latch is going to go through this cutout here, which means it's clamping onto some 6mm, which means, uh, yeah, it should be pretty solid and quite rigid. So here's my actual cowling. So I'm referring to the cowling, the bit that actually goes, um, that the draw goes into, and it's going to be completely watertight. These two holes here are for my overextension draw slides, which you saw on CAD. They call this pinch weld. And this is the first time that I put it on and it looks pretty good. This is all the stuff that I bought off the shelf. So this is a whale tail latch. So as you saw in CAD, they give you a proper 3D model of this, which means you can do all your tolerancing and get it right in CAD. 
And then these are my 850 mil lockable sliders. So these parts here are the locks, so you can lock it when the drawer's out. So these are some bits of alley. I'm using a 20 by 40 mil one to pack out the slider. You'll understand what I mean, but that'll be one of the jobs that I do first. And then this is the slider cowling. So this will be the overextension bit, the bit that looks funny that comes out the back. For me, this is the part of the project that I enjoy the most, watching all my designs come together. So I've been looking forward to this for the past few weeks and I cannot wait to get the TIG onto this. So let's go ahead and put this thing together right now. Bandsaw on the box section comes in handy. You can see here I've got my spacer, so my draw slide is going to sit directly on top of this. You can see here that the slide will clear the cowling as it goes in and out. So that's the reason why I'm doing this. So I'm going to go ahead and stitch weld this on and then I can punch some holes straight through the spacer so the bolts will go straight to my draw slides. There we have it, two opposite sides and I've gone ahead and drilled the holes in here so now we can start assembling the cowling. CNC folds went together like Lego. It was super easy. I just literally just slotted it together. We are all tacked up and ready to do some full passes. I've cracked out the adjustable welding perch for the occasion. For those of you who haven't been following, I designed and built this welding table. Um, and I've put this adjustable perch on, which makes my life a lot easier for full passes because I'm not talented enough to weld in free air. Weld it up now, uh, have a look at the weld detail. Dimes. Getting better, getting more consistent. One little dip there, but then the rest of it, super happy with. So this is the actual drawer itself. Part that I found the trickiest, and I sort of knew that this would happen when I was designing it, but to get the TIG torch in to seal around the flange here, um, it was a bit of a pain. Uh, and I've had to actually, I, I put material there and I use the flap to get a little bit off so it's a bit cleaner. It's not too bad and you know, I guess at the end of the day the, the rubber seal is still going to be all good and, and be able to clip to this. So it is a bit messy. I'm still a bit torn because if I'd put a complete miter on a 45, then it would have been really hard to assemble. The way that I did it with this straight bit here, I was able to just stack this top piece on top. You can see from the time lapse, it was super, super easy to assemble. So I'm a little bit torn. Maybe a miter would have been easier to weld, but then for assembly and getting the thing straight, I think the way that I did it using the horizontals is probably the best way to go, but I, I don't know. I don't know, if, you, if you've had any experience with this stuff, let me know in the comments and let me know what how you, how you would do it differently. You can see here the slides are hanging out the back, so instead of extending the cowling all the way, I've made the enclosure just go over the slide to save space and to allow me to fit a water tank in between. Okay, just put everything in for a test fit. So just checking all my whale tail latches will seal and stuff, which they seem to. You can see it 
pulling in. So that will be pulling in on the seal, which is fantastic. So I'll take this all apart now, weld the cowling on, weld that, and then we're close to actually mounting this thing on the car, which is pretty exciting. So just finished up with the slider cowling, starting to get a little bit better at those inside corners. So finally figured out my settings, which is nice. So it looks a bit odd, but we always knew it would be. I've never designed a sealed drawer before, so I was really worried about getting a seal right. So. As a result, I was pretty aggressive with all the tolerances on it. And it turns out that I may have been a little bit too aggressive. You can sort of see here um, the actual face plate of the drawer. It just, it probably needs just a little bit more clearance. So if I went an extra five mil up on each side, the bottom and the top, and then the sides, it would be perfect. So I'm really lucky I haven't welded this face plate yet. So I'll just go get another one lasered and then that will be the end of that. I've got Mez from Bar of the World helping me out with this one. So we're installing my drawer and we're using the proven car building method of window packers and ratchet straps just to get it in the right spot. And then we're gonna weld this off. So I'm mounting it off some angle iron. I'll get in there with a light and show you after we've done it. Have a look at the time lapse for now. And then, uh, yeah, the tolerance is super tight on this thing. so which is exactly what we're after, precision. Mounting brackets here. Got the drawer mounted up and it works really well. Super happy with it. So, how's that for overextension? So, it comes all the way out past the back of the tray, which is really cool, which is exactly what I wanted. Now the drawer is all done, it's time to get onto the rear end. So I've actually gone ahead and capped all these off just with some two mil steel. And then I'm gonna put my light in here so just like that. I'll mount them up. The plan is to put a flap here on a hinge so we're able to swivel it up like that. I guess um, I need somewhere to mount the number plate. So the rule is if I mounted a plate on the drawer here, I have to be able to see in from a 45 angle from the top. And I actually think I'd get pretty close to that, but I think the rear end design as a whole looks a bit funny. So I think it would look better with an infill panel here, just like a two mil, three, three mil piece of alley and on some hinges. I'd love to just be able to weld some hinges on and then be done with it, but because the tolerances are so tight with my draw, I'm going to have to sink them up a little bit. So I'll get on the grinder, do some recesses, fill them with metal, and then I'll be able to put the hinges on. So quite a bit more work than I anticipated, but just classic car building.
rear end design. Let's get into it. Design a rear end that looks good, maximizes departure angle, and maximizes storage space. So this is what I've come up with. So I've tried to keep this rear end as slim as possible. So you can see here, let's have a look from the side. Um, I don't think it's really gonna affect my departure angle. Let's just say I brought my drawer further out to the end of the actual tray. Then you'd probably have to run a metal bar underneath. And I mean, it would probably end up being somewhere down here, which actually would affect the departure angle. I did mention in an earlier video that I was gonna go round lights, but this is a pretty good compromise. These are nice and slim and compact and they've got reverse indicator and stop in them as well. Let me just say that a 35 inch tire is too big to fit in here with an exhaust here. So that's why I've gone with the drawer option. And you can see that my drawer has left enough space in here for a water tank. I guess ideally what I'm looking for here is a water tank, maybe 50, 50 to 70 liters. So there's definitely enough space between these cowlings so I can actually, uh, yeah, get, get a water tank in there. So this drawer, the sliders are rated to 100 kilos. The drawer itself probably weighs around 20 kilos. So, so let's just say we fill the drawer up. We're at 120 kilos there. Say we're at 50 to 70 kilos for the water tank. Round up, we're around 200 kilos. So 200 kilos really close to the chassis. The weight's nice and low down, which is supreme for handling. The other thing is my drawer doesn't come too far out past the back of the chassis, which is for a few reasons, but primarily because I didn't want it getting damaged. So now this, this frame rail is gonna take all the impact if we knock it around when we're off-roading. I mean, it protrudes a little bit, don't get me wrong, it's probably almost 50 mil out there, but I'd be very, very surprised if we knock that around when we we're off-roading. Having a drawer that doesn't extend all the way out is gonna bring the yaw inertia down for the car, which is always a good thing for the handling. I guess I'll probably offset it actually by putting a spare tire up here somewhere. In my experience with drawers, it doesn't really matter the size of them, you're always gonna fill them with junk. So it's not a huge drawer, and I guess a lot of them go the whole length under the tray, but I do think it's big enough for some heavy spare parts and for some special tools that I guess, you know, I wouldn't really access very much. Now you'll notice the hoop here surrounds the light, which minimizes the chance of damage to the light. And I've also gone pretty much flush mount a little bit inset into here so that if I reverse into anything or knock it around on the tracks, that it's not gonna damage the actual light. Talking about the design, you can see I've got an angle here. So this is to complement the actual roll hoop. It's supposed to be the opposite. So the roll hoop goes that way, this one goes that way. And it's also got nice wide bar to complement the roll hoop as well. So if it's sort of standing back, you can sort of hopefully tell. And then I've got a 32 NB bar running back to the guard. So it's nice and triangulated, nice and strong. So this is actually quite a structural member. This is pretty likely to get knocked around on the track. So that's why I've sort of done what I've done. And it is quite a solid piece. So I've got this flap in here and I've had to sink the hinges in flush, but it opens and closes nicely. As I mentioned earlier, I, this is more of an aesthetic thing, but it also will be functional because I'm going to put a number plate there. This flap is made out of two mil alley, but it's unfinished. I've still got to do some magnets in here so it, it retains itself. Pick two mil alley because I wanted to keep it light to start with. It's pretty unlikely that I'm going to hit this area of the car, especially given the departure angle, but it is possible. So I'm just going to monitor it and see. And then if it breaks, I'll just remake an infill panel out of blue bar and, and something a bit more solid. It's, it's hard to visualize at the moment because it's all unpainted, but this is all going to be black, the drawer included. So it's going to be nice and stealthy. Um, I don't think you'll be able to tell that I have a drawer. So I guess my exhaust is going to be there. And essentially what I've done with this rear end design and the metal hoop that surrounds the light is try and create as big a cavity as possible between the frame rail and the top of the tray so I can get as big a drawer in as possible. And you've saw it before, but it's very, it's a precision fit. We're talking less than 10 millimeters and on the side there's a little bit as well. Now I've mounted this drawer with 6M6s either side, so 12 in total. Look, there are some additional mounts in these drawer slides that I could potentially do some plugs and a mounting system back here somewhere, but I've decided to risk it for the biscuit and not do that initially. Let's just see how we go. I've never designed anything like this, um, but there is a significant amount of weight on it. So I've used some angle iron, some three mil angle iron, and then I've welded on some more three mil, as you sort of saw in the in the build log and it seems extremely solid at the moment i've got it all tacked up but next time i do some tray welding i'll uh, weld it all off properly i put rubber in between the alley cowling and the draw mounts as well to prevent dissimilar metal corrosion and to uh to stop the vibration 
And then let's have a look at my drawer. So I don't think I've gone over this in too much detail, although you've seen the CAD. So when this seals in, this drawer should be completely waterproof. Now, I haven't tested it yet, and I really should have done it before I mounted it because now I can't be bothered unbolting it. But the whole thing is going to have to come apart for paint, so I'll probably do a test then. I was thinking about trying to submerge it in a pool, but actually it'd be quite buoyant because it is quite a big drawer. Now, I guess one of the cool things about my drawer is because I've tried to maximize the space under there, which I explained before, that the drawer is quite deep. So I was actually thinking about putting some dividers in the drawer and some rubber matting underneath, just so stuff didn't rattle around in there. Let's talk about something I don't like about the design, and I think it's important to be critical of your own design, so that's why I'm gonna point it out. Having the seal return like this, which will create a waterproof seal, actually takes off space on each side and and to me it just feels like wasted space there's distance between the side of the drawer there and the cowling so i've got to account for a slider and then i've also got to account for that seal return which is about 20 mil 40 mil each side and top and bottom as well so for me it's sort of like you know i've got a, a nice big drawer but it could have been bigger i tried to design the seal another way and I'll flash up the CAD now to give you an idea but I couldn't think of a proper way to get it to seal so that's why I landed on this. I guess that's something about my design that I don't like. I don't know if it's possible to do it another way. Maybe you guys have some bright ideas in the comments. Never have I ever been so excited about a drawer in my life. I never thought I could get excited by a drawer but we're here now and I am pumped. Look at that. So stoked on the finish, so stoked on the rear end. In my mind, this is the best thing for my car. I'm not just doing this for YouTube content. I genuinely think that this is a good design. Don't take me for gospel. There are plenty of other designs out there. But yeah, I, I do think that this is the best design for my particular car. So that's the end of the episode. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know what you think in the comments. What did you think of my design? Um, what would you have done differently? I'm in isolation when I'm doing a lot of the designing and the building. So it's... um. It's cool to get some ideas from you guys. That's the back of the tray and the under tray drawer finish. So what's up next for the build? Let's flash up the list now. So we're gonna plumb the fuel system and get the engine running out of the fuel tanks. And then we're finally onto the diffs and I've decided that I'm gonna try and bolt some patrol diffs underneath this thing. So watch this space, there's a lot of work involved in that. And then I'm planning on doing a bull bar, mounting a winch and getting some sliders done and then we'll finally get onto the cab and some rust repair. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe and leave a comment. Cheers guys.